This is the outside of Bergen & Ball sheep shear manufacturers Sheffield, the last remaining sheep shear manufacturers in Sheffield, indeed in England. This is the steel, it comes in coils, about a third of a ton in weight and it comes from Sheffield. It comes in three different gauges, depending on the type of shear we're going to make. Uh, first of all, it's put onto a reeler and fed through a blanking machine, a blanking out machine. Uh, it'll punch one shear after another, and these shears being punched out are double bow, as opposed to two blades punched out together, which are single bow. After punching out, they go into a furnace and the bow is formed. The shears are rolled to a length and a thickness. The operator is now going to check the thickness to make sure that it's within tolerance. They want to be down to about 17 gauge. He then throws them onto the floor haphazardly so that they don't kneel. In other words, they don't soften. After they've cooled, they're taken onto a cropping machine and cut down to the, the right size for the pattern of shear which is going through. This is called cropping and it'll crop everyone to the same size, to the same length. After cropping we need to put two holes in them so they can put to, be put together later on. It's essential that these holes are spot on Otherwise, they won't marry up at the end of the job. After they've been cropped and punched, they go into a furnace at about a thousand degrees and they're formed on this machine marked on the next machine, hollowed on the next machine and the points are pulled in on the next apparatus all heated once. And here, that's forming, marking, hollowing and pulling the points in and generally straightening the shear up. Here the operator is making sure that the hollow fits the gauge or vice versa, the gauge fits the hollow. If he's satisfied, he'll carry on, but he'll do this test about every three dozen blades. That's where the mark is. We've got to see that the mark is good enough. That's where he's hollowed them. So that has got to fit a hollow machine. That's the kick so that later on when they're assembled they won't cross over. The blades have got to be standing up straight. The shear has all got to, got to be all in line. And when he's pulled the points together, they've got to be near enough at the same angle for later on in the job. The next job is setting. The shear is still soft. 
so we set an edge on while it's soft. In other words, we just clean the face up of that cutting edge. After setting, they go to the heat treatment department where they're hardened and tempered. Now they go into a furnace at 850 degrees and they're heated for about seven minutes and then they're quenched in whale oil or whale type oil as we use now. It used to be whale oil from the sperm whale's head, but now we're environmental friendly and we use whale type oil. Whale type oil also has the advantage of a high flash point and is used extensively in Sheffield industry. After they've been quenched, they're then cleaned off, ready for the next operation, which is tempering. The reason they have to be tempered is because when they're hardened, apart from the edge being hardened, some of the hardening runs right through the blade. Consequently, the blade would break. They're tempered at a temperature of 235 degrees for about five minutes, depending on the size of the shear and the width of the blade. After tempering, they drained off. And then when the salts have drained off them, they're then washed in a solution of boiling water and industrial soda. This gets them fairly clean to go on to the next job. There we see some salts remaining on that have got to be washed off. The final job before they go to the machines is that the blades have to be straightened. Now this machine is a hollow grinding machine and it grinds the inside blades which, which have been hollow formed previously. Normally, one man works two machines in tandem. Yes, the operator is having a quick glance at the shear to see that the finish is as required. There again, when he's finished, he straightens it, the shear, ready for the next operation. After inside grinding, they're taken down to a, a Bosch in the warehouse and they're boiled up in a solution of water and grinding fluid. Then they're taken into the warehouse, cleaned off, ready for inspection. So have a look, quick look down the blade, see that the quality's there. There's no 
The blade hasn't moved on the jig, and if it did, it would be no good because it wouldn't cut then. Right. So then I have a quick look at the thickness and a quick look at the back, because if the back's too thin, we'll not get the strength in the blade. Right. You can always test them like that. And if they look OK, I whip it around to the other end, have a look at the other end. That's the same, that's OK. And I can put it on there. If they're not up to standard here, they're thrown out because it's pointless letting them go any further and then throwing them out later. If they pass the examination, they're then oiled and stacked, ready for the next operation, which is glazing and polishing. The glazer does the shank, the top, the lap, and the back of the blades. After glaze and polishing, they go on to another grinding machine which grinds the whale edge. Now this grinds down to a, a thickness and it also hollow grinds so that we finish up with a blade that's double hollow ground. The thickness is to enable a cutting edge to be put on, so we want to keep it fairly thin. After whale edging, they again go in the boiler and are cleaned off, ready for a second examination. Now we're looking at the width of the whale edge, the shape of the whale edge, we're looking at the quality of the glaze, the quality of the mark. We're looking at the shanks as well, see that they're not burnt. We're looking at the backs to see that they're polished so that they'll, they'll go down the fleece better. If they pass the examination, they're again got ready for the next operation by oiling and stacking. Now these that are being oiled now are single bows, i.e. two blades on one shear. Some people like double bow, some people like single bow. It's a matter of customer preference. That's our pattern board. Some of those patterns are obsolete, but we can make them again any time we like. After stacking, they'll be picked up by the benders for the last operation. Here a bender is riveting the double bow together. Here the bender is forming the bow. We call this pulling round. Depending on what type of shear they are, some are stiffer than others to pull round, so consequently he has a hammer at his side if he needs it. If they need a bit of persuasion like this one, it's going to give it them. That shows you how much wears on the hammer it's taken years to get like that. The second part of forming the bow is with a vice again. And every man forms his own shape bow. 
No two men work alike. The number of people that can do this job, you can count on one hand. Now he's knocking each shank down, each bow, side of the bow down. Now he's lifting the blades. Now he's pulling the points in. Everything he can do to make it a balanced shear that cuts for the entire length of, it, of the blade. Ralph's been doing this job for 40 odd years. A lot of the jobs he's doing now, he's doing them by feel. They're not always apparent to the eye. But at the end of the day, that shear has got to cut. Here he's taking them onto this stone and he's putting the cutting edge on. Now when he puts the cutting edge on, he, he stones it until he sees the fash come up at the back of the blade. If you look, you might see the fash, dark blue fash. And then after both blades have uh, got the fash up, he cuts the fash off making sure that he doesn't cut into the edge of the blade. And just see the fash coming up on the back. There on that one as well. And he's cutting the fash off slowly without digging in. Now he's wet, what we call wetting the blade off. That's putting a smooth edge on it with a very hard stone the stone is Arkansas stone from the United States. And after they've been rubbed with that stone, they'll be really smooth and really sharp. This is the other type of sheep shear, single bow sheep shear. Similar to the double bow shear for working on. Just a matter of customer preference. Whether you choose double bow or single bow. Here again, he's knocking them down each side of the bow to put some strength into the shear. Then he's lifting the blades, <laughs> pulling the points in. Now I'm going to come forward a bit. Right. Setting the blades. Obviously putting a bit of twist on the blade. Springing it. Making sure it's balanced. After bending, we go to the warehouse. The warehouse lady oils them, 
wraps them and puts them in boxes. The oil she uses is the same oil as we use downstairs and those shears can be safely stored for two years at least, probably longer. Six in a box and then they go into a packing case. She'll put any labels on that are necessary, depending on where the she is going to. That's some of our stock, which goes all over the world. The customer can ring up or fax and he'll get whatever he wants, hopefully out of stock. These shears are going to the Argentine. These are going to Scotland. Oh, these are going to a sponge fisherman in Florida, USA. Our shears are not only used for shearing sheep, they're used for various other occupations, such as cutting leather, gardening, They're being loaded now onto a lorry for dispatch. 